What's up, Upstreet fam? It's great to see you here for another awesome day on Upstreet Online. I'm Jake, and today we're talking about what makes you great. And it's not what you might expect. You ready to get into it? Let's go! One of the most awesome things about God is that He wants to help us live the best life we can. So He has a lot He wants us to know, and we can find it all in the Bible. And we want to take what God says and learn it, lock it, and live it. So let's see what God wants us to know about service. In humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Service and serving others is all about putting other people's needs before our own. And there's a lot packed in that verse. In humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. Philippians 2, 3 through 4. The first part of the verse says we should value others above ourselves. It means being more focused on what the people around us need and a little less focused on ourselves. This isn't always easy, but it is super important to remember. Let's see if we can lock this verse in our minds and in our hearts. Now you may have noticed there are a lot of words in this verse, but don't panic because I've got a cool little brain trick that will help you lock it all in. And it involves getting up and moving. So everyone, on your feet. You're going to have to trust me. I'm going to ask you to do some weird stuff, but we're all kind of weird, so I think you're gonna be into it. I want you to hold your arms out like this. Then we're gonna bring our thumbs together and say, in humility. See, that looks kind of like a capital H. Then make a V with your hands like this. That's for value. So, in humility, value. The next part is others above yourselves. That's so simple. So let's start at the top. In humility, value others above yourselves. You've already got the first part down. Now the next word is not. So we're gonna make an X. Not looking, make those binoculars. Not looking to your own interest. But, yeah, I knew you'd like that part. Each of you point, as you say each word, to the interest of others. Philippians sounds like the word flip. So flip your hand back and forth like this. And the last part is just the numbers in order. So Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Now let's take it from the top. Watch how your brain remembers. In humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Awesome, let's do it one more time together so we can really lock it in. In humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Great job, everyone. You are going to have this verse on lock in no time. God wants us to learn his word so we can remember it wherever we need it. Learn it, check. Lock it, check. Now let's see how we can live it. I did it! I won the spelling bee at school! And I know I shouldn't brag, but guys, check out the size of this thing! I literally can't with how shiny it is! And you guys might be thinking, Maya chill, it's just a trophy! But here's the deal. I've been studying for weeks for the spelling bee, and I can't tell you how many times I've practiced spelling the word vivacious. And I know more about the point of origin words better than basically everyone in the school. I mean, winning the spelling bee and getting this trophy is like such a big deal. Did you know that they take my picture for the yearbook? I'm basically going down in history books for this. But I guess all this fame comes at a cost. Lex and Riley have been saying that I've been bragging too much and been a little inconsiderate. Check out that spelling bee word of their feelings. Ugh, why can't they just be happy for me? Wow, now that is a tough one. Because winning a trophy is a big deal and you do want your friends to think you're great. 
I mean, some people say that greatness comes from how many trophies you have or how many championships you've won. Like Tom Brady. He's called the GOAT, the greatest of all time, because of how many championships he has won. So if you win a lot, you may think, now that makes me great, right? Or some people say greatness comes when you have lots of stuff. Like if I make a lot of money, I can buy a lot of cool things. And you may be thinking, now that makes me great, right? And other people might say you're great if you're famous. I mean, look at the guys from Dude Perfect. They're super famous with tons of followers on their YouTube channel who want to do all the cool tricks that they do. And if you had a channel with tons of subscribers and tons of followers, you might think that will make me great, right? Well, regardless of how rich you are, how many trophies you've won, or how famous you are, Jesus has something to say about how you can become great. Let me explain. See, Jesus was around some people who were having a debate about what makes you great. And then they asked Jesus to tell them how they could become great. Well, Jesus dropped a major truth bomb that none of them were expecting. We can read about this in the book of Mark. So let's check it out and see what Jesus had to say. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Mark 10, 43. Now hold on. Wait a second, Jesus. Are you telling me that serving is what makes you great? See, Jesus says that greatness is really measured by how we serve, by how we treat others and how we love and help those around us. Serving others makes you great. And that's kind of mind blowing, right? Well, here, let me explain by giving you some examples. This is my friend Hudson. She's a kid in elementary school just like you. And each week her mom would give her ice cream money but her mom figured out that Hudson wasn't actually using that money to buy her own ice cream. Instead, she was giving her ice cream money to another girl in her class. And when her mom found out, she offered to give Hudson double the amount so she could pay for herself and her friend. But guess what? Hudson said, that's okay, mom. I just wanna help my friends. And how awesome is that? What a cool way to serve. Now you might not get ice cream money on the regular, but there are lots of other ways that you can serve. Sometimes all you need is a good idea. So let's play a game. I call it Serves Up. I'm gonna ask you a question like, how can you serve someone on the playground? And then I'm going to put a 15 second timer on the screen. In those 15 seconds, I want you to shout out as many ideas as you can, and we'll see how many you get. Ready? All right. First question. How can you serve others in the school cafeteria? Ready, go. And stop, that's time. How many ideas did you have? Anyone have more than three? More than four? Well, here's my ideas. In the cafeteria, you could throw away someone's trash. Sit next to someone who's sitting by themselves. Pick something up if someone drops it. And I only got three that time. So let's try another round. Ready? How can you serve others in your neighborhood? Ready, go. That's time. How'd you do? More than four? I got five this time. I got bring in someone's trash cans, help walk a dog, ask a friend to play, help someone bring in the groceries, clean up a playground. There's lots of ways to serve in a neighborhood, right? Okay, final round. See how many you can get. How can you serve others at home? Ready, go. time. Now who beat five? Did you get more than five? 
I got six. Y'all ready for this? Here's my list. We got empty dishwasher, fill up dog's water bowl, put away someone's shoes, clean the toilets, pick up toys, replace the toilet paper roll. <sighs> did you get more than me? I bet you did. Great job. There are so many ways that you can serve in your schools, your neighborhoods, and right in your own houses. But awesome ideas are not enough. We've got to follow through and do something because serving others makes you great. It's not about trophies or being famous or even having lots of stuff. Greatness is about serving. And that's what makes you great. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for sending Jesus to teach us how to serve others. Help us this week to remember how serving others can make us great. We love you. Amen. Like Jesus did, I'm gonna love all my